Mmm, it's time for a cup of coffee and build a PC from 1997. I like that this case is extra wide. I remember them from the time when people played Quake and Need for Speed 1 and 2, and this being a 1997 machine, it fits perfectly for my nostalgia. When I saw these extra wide cases some of my friends had, I would envy them so much, as they looked like some awesome powerful machines, compared to what I had. This is a CNET PPI 556, and at the bottom of the case the original hardware is listed. 64 megs of RAM, 2.1 GB hard drive, Velocity 128, that is a RAGE 128 Pro, and a 233 MHz processor. So let's take a closer look at the hardware. I will be using some original hardware and some not original hardware. The motherboard has two ISA slots, four PCI slots, and one AGP slot. It has room for three sticks of RAM, and we can see here the motherboard is an Intel AL440LX. And it is using a slot 1 for the CPU. For sound I will be using the AWE64. The Rage 128 Pro graphics card with the cutest little heatsink and an Intel network card. And 384 MB of RAM, 40 GB disk, a floppy drive, 52 speed CD-ROM and a DVD-ROM. And here we have the fastest CPU Intel had to offer back in 1997. It is the 300MHz Intel Pentium 2. So here I'm figuring out how many standoffs I need and where to place them. And since I don't have the old styled white plastic standoffs, I glued this rubber wheel onto the motherboard plate, so when I install the expansion cards I won't push the motherboard into the metal plate. I used the wrong fan connector here, but the motherboard did not have a fan connector called C-Fan, only fan 1, 2 and 3. I did change after reading the manual. If you don't use the designated fan connector for the CPU, your motherboard might not boot. I'm always using the master and slave settings on the hard drives and CD-ROMs and so on, instead of cable select. It is just a habit I still have. When installing the front power LEDs like HDT LED and power LED, make sure you check the manual to ensure that you have the right polarity. Booting up the computer, thinking everything is fine. But the CPU is detected as 233 MHz. I had to set the motherboard into configuration mode and set the speed manually.
I will use my backup CD of Windows, install the operating system and games and jump straight into demonstrating some games. The CPU in this machine is a monster. Using Sysoft Sandro's CPU benchmark, I got 810 MIPS and 398 MFLOPS. I don't know what that is, but on my 96 PC with the 200 MHz, the fastest 1996 had to offer, I got 472 and 230. With the CPU multimedia benchmark, I got 469, 160 for the 200 MHz, but of the 300 MHz, I got 757 and 440. A pretty massive difference. If you want more benchmarks, go to Phil's computer lab, as I got the same performance as his 1997 setup, and he is the king of benchmarks.